S. Just a moment, folks. Okay, America! It's Larry Wayne's column. It says I spent the night here. Why, the dirty liar. Hey, Jim, get this one. Well, that's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Ray, no. just last week I waited on her in the hunting park, and he was with her. What do you know? Never mind what I know. What do you know? Say, why don't you know where this great girl is? I do, but I'm saving it for a Sunday syndicate. Hey, low down. What's the latest? Read your paper in the morning, sweetheart. You'll find it in my column. We don't read your column, Ego. You should, Lucille, just to see what's building up your circulation. Get those off as soon as you can. And don't call me Lucille. We've lost Gershwin, our biggest jewelry account, because you printed a story about, about the old man running around with some little chippy. And boy, was he the honey. Uh, uh, Mr. Wayne, uh, uh, a newspaper can't exist on honey. <coughs> it's very good for the throat, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh, will you come into my office, please? Oh. <coughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Your contract still has four years to run. Correct. And I can't fire you. Would you like to? Uh, uh, very much. Why? You're not a newspaper man, Wayne. You're a spy. You changed our newspaper into an espionage sheet. Because I break news? Because you spread scandal. And newspapers don't do that? We don't bite the hand that feeds us. Look here. What do you know about that? 
Nothing. Except that the girl went out in a speedboat. Speedboat returned, but the girl wasn't in it. That's all you know, eh? And you, the great Larry Wayne. Why don't you lay off our advertisers and get to work on a good story? Maybe I will. If I do, you'll probably read the answer in my column. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Wayne? Yeah, I'm that way about myself, Mr. Jones. Wayne. Yes, sir. Hey, did you ever see the Roman Colosseum? No, sir. They built it of columns. Granite columns. Today, it's a mossy ruin. I get your slant, Mr. Jones. Are you sure that you do, Wayne? Positive. You mean the Romans were lousy columns? Uh, uh, not bad, not bad. You got a great kick in that, sister. Thanks. Hey, here you go. Well, the boss kind of kicked you out a little bit in there, didn't he, boy? No, he just asked me not to print that story about you and the new sob sister going places while your wife's away. Say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Wayne. Just a minute. If you mean Miss Rollins here, you're wrong. She and I have never seen each other outside of this office. Okay. Story's dead. Say... Did you tell him about us? No, I didn't. And you didn't tell me about your wife. What do you know, obituary? How's the budding journalist? Uh, my column never varies, Mr. Wayne. People die every day. I just jot them down. Well, obituary, you're dogging it. The seal's been dead for over three years. He never even mentioned his name. Was that Mr. Wayne? No, Mayor Walker. That's why I called him, Mr. Wayne. You're late? Yeah, I know. Went down to the Bronx Zoo. Are you looking at the monkey? Yeah. Wall Street broker, his blonde secretary, kid about 18. What were they doing? Feeding the elephant. <laughs> no harm in that, is it? I don't know. I couldn't get the elephant to talk. Uh-oh. <laughs> there are a million telephone messages for you. Important? Well, they can wait till after you finish your column. You know, you've got to hire you. It's broadcast today. Right, let's go. What poem did I tell you to top it off with today? Trees by Joyce Kilmer. I love it. Yeah. Homes are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Marvelous, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, Kilmer wasn't a columnist. Think you could make a tree? I don't know. Never tried. I wouldn't bother to if I were you. Wouldn't be worth your while. Okay, let's go to work. Did you know that Lillian Vanity's story has been seen casinoing with Herbert Wright lately, and, um... I forgot. There's a bean of Mrs. Herbert Wright waiting to see you. Okay, have a bit where you send her in. Uh, you can go in now. Mr. Wayne? Why don't you sit down, Mrs. Wright? Thanks. Briefly, my visit concerned the story you intend to print concerning my husband. You seem pretty familiar with my intentions. Yes. And I'm perfectly aware of Mr. Wright's infatuation for a certain chorus girl. I followed them to the casino last night. I saw you there. Oh. I see, and Mr. Wright doesn't know... You no, know, he has no idea that I even suspect him. And I don't want him to know. You can't have the children. That's why I've come to you. To ask you not to print his name in your column. Don't let my tears annoy you, Mr. Wayne. Wives always weep. but I never met your kind of woman before. I hope I get a wife just like you. Because when I was a kid, I used to play hooky all the time. Yes? Oh, Buck. Come on over right gag. Never mind the looks. Just kill the story. I have the wrong dope. The story is Larry Wayne, Mrs. Jones. What a huge book they make. Yeah. Yes, and I think it's sweet of you. Hey, now don't go soft on me. Let's get to work. Playboy Williams has been campaigning with Muriel Kingston. 
I don't let many of them get away from me. What movie star thinks a speakeasy is a place to take elocution lessons? And, uh... The only reason I killed the story is because I like that woman, see? She's different. She's got a fine slant, see? Hey. If you married a guy and he gave you the air for a Corrine, would you figure he was just playing hooky for a while and uh, take him back? I would not. Okay, that takes you off the list. Take Uncle to Zigfield Corrine has offered me plenty to say Uncle, but... Uh... Mr. Wayne? Mr. Wayne's busy just now. May I see you up Uncle Mr. Wayne? Well, it's customary to be announced. It's okay, Barton. Make it snappy, will you, young fella? What's on your mind? Does the name Jerry Robbins mean anything to you? I've heard it before. I wrote you two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I remember about... About Phyllis Martin. Oh, it seems you threatened me. Yeah. If you printed another crack about her. And I did. Yeah, and that's why I'm here now. To threaten me again? No. I'll kill you. You've written your last wise crack about anybody, Mr. Wayne. Is this on the level, or are you clowns? You slandered the girl I'm engaged to marry, and you're gonna pay for it. Okay. I got one favor to ask of you first. Let me write a request to be cremated, taken up over New York and thrown to the wind. With my ashes blown into every corner of the city, can you imagine the stories I'd gather for a column up there? And then again... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this. But if you'll deny and apologize for that paragraph you wrote this morning, I'll get out of here. Sorry, I can't deny it. Why? Because it's true. What? <coughs> Now sit down, Sap, and listen to me. Whenever I print a story about anyone, it's true. I know that hurts, but you're asking for it. And the girl you're engaged to marry is a kept thing. You lie! Take it from me. When you know as many truths as I do, you don't have to lie. You can't prove it. Everybody knows it except you. I'm going to tell you a young. And if after I've finished, you still think it's your duty to pop me off, there's your fireworks. I was a Romeo once, and believe it or not, Juliet was really her name. Like you, I worked day and night to gather enough dough to get married to her. And like your Phyllis, she remained with me while she gold-digged a married man. No one told me. They didn't dare. They just sat back in ringside seats and watched me take it on the chin. And when you find out that you put everything you got into a fake contest, believe me, your heart goes granite, your faith goes cynical, and your ideals of romance become good frigid air advertisements. Oh, how often I found myself wishing someone had tipped me off. Saved me part of the time, anyway. But Larry Wayne wasn't writing his column then. So when I did start scribbling, I made up my mind to print everything I knew about everyone. Just to light up dark corners, keep society a little bit on the level. And save saps like you, myself. Excuse me, Mr. Wayne, it's almost set. Okay, Barton. You'll have to excuse me now. Where were we? The fake uncle of the Zigfield Corrine has offered me plenty to say uncle. Yeah. But a young Romeo won't be climbing the balcony much longer, so my silence isn't worth a dime. Well, just a minute. Here's your gun. Thanks, Wayne. You're a game guy at that. Sure. And here's your bullets. I'm no chump, either. Thank you. 
Oh, I wish I could get the lowdown on this drink case. I suppose you realize you haven't even time for a sandwich now. Oh, I can broadcast on an empty stomach. No girl with parents worth millions is going to run away from home unless so much money not to goofy. I wish you wouldn't go without eating. It's weakening. You know, one of these days... I know, I know. I'll fold up. Okay. Then you run the count. You're a better newspaper man than I am anyway. I'm not a newspaper man. And I wish you'd realize that I'm not a man. You don't have to tell me that, Barton. I know my geography. And I'm not a man. Some New York mom must be holding that girl, but I can't figure why I haven't had the slightest tip on it. And I can't figure why you never paid the slightest attention to me. Sorry, Barton, but I've got a big job. Well, Napoleon had a big job, and he found time to relax. And Caesar wasn't exactly loafing when he met Cleopatra. He knocked off work. Barton, are you trying to vamp me? No, I'm not, but I'm trying to figure out why you never tried to vamp me. I've been your secretary for over three years, and you've never even tried to kiss me. Okay, okay. From now on, I'll kiss you three times a day. Remind me of it. Oh, I don't want you to. But I wish I could understand why you never wanted to. I'd dress my best for you. I'd be dignified and sedate for you. And with it all, you never even asked me whether I have a family or parents or a boyfriend. You, the great columnist, first had the low down on everyone. I bet you don't even know what my first name is. I know all about you, Sheila. Your father's a grocer. Your mother makes swell mulligan. Your boyfriend's been waiting years for you to say yes. Perhaps I'll say it tonight. Well, you should, but you won't. Like a lot of skirts, you get a bigger thrill out of saying no to the bunch than yes to any one guy. Ah, we're nearing our subway station, lady. Hi, Step down, please, and follow the green line. Sometimes I hate you. Oh, and sometimes I love you. Station WDF. What do you know, kid? W.E.F. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we hear your favorite columnist, Larry Wayne. All right, Larry. Okay, America. This is Larry Wayne. And now, folks, I suppose you want to hear the latest gossip about the main stem in the morning room. Well, Sam Evans, the big topper king from out yonder, is back in town. Well, you're more interested in looking at that guy than you are in marrying me. But now he doesn't don't like to be silly, I do work for our own time, naturally. I'm interested in my work. For our and Jade and three times, there's no place to linger. Right now, everybody's kidding me about the disappearance of Ruth Drake. I wish I could cross him and give you the lowdown, but I can't. It's just another example of the crime situation in our country. If Americans can't live safely in America, it isn't much of a country, I say. No atrocity of the World War was more horrible than the theft and murder of a child of our national hero. And now the daughter of another great American has disappeared. If she's gone of her own accord, I hope she realizes the suffering that she is causing her parents to Mother! Mother! If she is being held, I can only pray I that every one of the American in this nation will be see. Pipe down, Miss Drake. You're not going to be hurt. Now, good night, folks, and while you go to bed, I'll go places and gather more news for you. This is Larry Wayne, signing off. Okay, America! <laughs>
slow what I think of him. Hey, listen. You ruined her life. That's what you did. You ruined Jerry Robbins' life. He left me tonight. He left New York. He left this big town to go back to his rotten hometown and his parents. And just on account of you. I don't know. Listen. Come, come. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Wayne. Ah, uh, forget it, Alex. She's been sipping too much hysterical tea, that's all. She'll never get in here again. Don't ever keep her out. Unless you want to close the joint to everyone with a cockeyed slant on life. But when you do that, you won't have enough business left to keep a Victrola busy. Thanks, Mr. Wayne. Hello, kid. Bankers retire, don't they? Businessmen retire. Why can't a bootlegger take a rest? And listen, you take a tip from me and keep your nose clean. Well, I'm a newspaper man. You printed that story about the whole killing hours before it happened, now, didn't you? Yeah, and got into plenty of trouble with the DA. So well, don't do it again, kid. It's not uh, healthy. Thanks, Mileway. But a story's a story with me. When I get it, it's got to go. Yeah, well, look out you don't go with it yourself. Stick to your chorus girl and your millionaires. Then the worst you can get is a libel suit. But Larry don't talk. He proved that when the D.A. tried to force the lowdown on that whole killing out of him. If that kid had opened up, he'd have convicted that whole Detroit crowd. But Larry don't talk. You know, a good newspaper man never divulges the source of his information. That's a slogan in our racket. There's nothing you don't know, is there? Oh, I get around. <laughs> Bet you even know where prosperity is hiding. Maybe you can tell us what the drink girl is. Maybe you can tell me. I wish I knew. I could get myself some heavy dough out of it. Who's the Drake girl? Who's Drake? Father's one of the richest men in the country. A friend of the president. She did a run out about a week ago. It hasn't showed up since. Yeah, well, uh, maybe she can't show up. That's my slant, by the way. Hey, listen. I bet you could find her if you look. Who, me? Sure. What a yard. Ex-racketeer agrees to find Ruth Drake. Would you do it for me? No, kid. Just because I've quit the racket, no reason for crossing the boys that are still in it. Far away here, Mike. Inside. Well, if it isn't the old skipper himself. Oh, how do you do, boy? Joe, you know Larry Wayne, don't you? Yes, I've heard of him. How do you do, Mr. Wayne? Joe Stevens, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I've heard of you, too. Yeah. Oh, you're on the blade, aren't you? Yeah. What do you say, uh, 
Good idea. Want a drink before you go, Joe? No, I'm on the water wagon. Okay, I'll be seeing you, kid. Why am I on the way? What? We should reconsider that Drake case, make up pip of a story. Well, maybe I'll think it over. You give me a buzz in a day or two, will you? Well. some more stuff for me. No. I've been busy ever since I left you. Larry, you gave me two bucks today, didn't you? Right. Right. You gave me two bucks every day. Right? Correct. Correct. Today you gave me two one dollar bills. Correct? Correct. Correct. Do you know what I did with them? I have a rough idea. Correct? Correct. I sent one dollar to my poor own mother. Oh, now, Morton, that was swell. Well, it's no more than I should do. After all, your mother is your mother. Correct? Correct. Correct. And then I gave another dollar, spread it between four old down and out bites, so they could eat. Oh, what a pal, kid. Correct. And then I gave another dollar to the Salvation Army because they treated us for the right in the war. And then I gave another... Hey, you, you, you mean you did all this with the two dollars I gave you this afternoon? Correct. And that left me a little bit short. Oh, I wondered if you would advance me some more on tomorrow's stuff. You're a swell guy, Larry. You're a real guy. I'm a bum. I'm a cheat. Ah, oh, no, no. Oh, yes, I am. I've been boxing you for a long time. That junk that I've been giving you wasn't on the level. I just write down anything came into my head so as to get the dough. And you never text me now what? Oh, and I never will, kid, so forget about it. Oh, it's yeah. all right. But I I sort of squared things to the story I gave you today, didn't I, Larry? Sure did, Morton. Are you gonna print it? Why not? Aren't you afraid to? Nah, of course not. You're a game guy, Larry. Thanks, kid. Oh, what a story it'll be. The best story you ever had, don't it's you think? Honey, so? It's a honey, it's a honey. It's on the level, too. Because when I told you that Ruth picked uh, Liz, is exactly where she is. Mark! Morton, I'll be on the level with you now. I lost that story you gave me tonight. Oh, you should have destroyed it. Yeah, I know. I did, even before I read it. But tell me, where's the Drake girl? What do you know? Oh. Stop. You didn't even read my copy. Yeah. I'll tell you why later, Morton. Do you expect me to dig up a news for you and you don't even bother to go at it? I know. I'm sorry, Morton, but tell me. Give me the dope. What do you know? I don't know who's got her. And so would you, if you took the trouble to read my stuff. For who, Morton? Would you really like to print who's got her? Oh, more than anything else in the world right now. Story you ever printed? The best ever, kid. Morton! Who, oh, Morton? Who, who, who? Milo A. Russell. Oh, uh, Morton, you've been thinking about it. Milo A. Russell's even quit his own record. He's never been mixed up in anything like this. Milo A. Russell. I know. How do you know? I 
a good newspaper man never divulges the source of his information. You don't know all that. Mile away, Russell. on the scent of a news story, he's worse than a foxhound with a dozen noses. I don't like him with too many smells. In there, Mr. Wayne. Well, if I'm, if I'm intruding, my way, just throw me out. What's on your mind, kid? Come on in. I'm just all hopped up about this Drake case. Thought if I could prevail on you to change your mind, I'd shoot the story tomorrow. Oh, I'd like to, Larry. As a matter of fact, we talked it over, but it, it's out. I don't want to get mixed up. Be an awful feather in your cap. Yeah, and it might be a lily in my hand. What are you trying to do? Put my way on a spot to get bumped off? Just to get yourself a story? Forget it. Well, it was my way suggestion. Oh, I always talk too much when I drink. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, I'll print your guess. If you care to give it to me. I wouldn't print anything about this case if I were you, kid. I told you before, keep your nose clean. Well, that's news, my way, and I gotta write about it. There's another reason I wanted to see you. I thought you might like to read this before I let it go. but it was hot. And if the police want to load down on the Drake girl, why not see the racketeer was always a mile away when anything happened. You're a pretty smart fella, Larry. Thanks, mile away. Only, uh, you're not gonna run this story. You're not gonna run any story again, Larry. I can tell from the way the boys are looking at you, they're awful mad. I'm afraid you're never even going to get back to your paper, Larry. Okay, by the way. But the lap's on you. Because I've already sent a copy of that paragraph into the office. You're lying. Send it sealed in an envelope with instructions to be opened before the deadline closes in case I'm not there. And that I'd see you about the story tonight. Now listen, Larry. You better make up your mind to be a good boy and behave yourself before it's too late. You give me your word, and that kid's word is good with me, that you won't run a line on this Drake case, and we'll forget all about it and have a little drink together, eh? Story's a story with me, and when I get... Hey, wait a minute. Okay, boys. You're not putting me on the spot, my way. You're putting yourself there. I got a better idea than that. Well, spill it. Well, let me announce to the papers tomorrow that I've contacted the abductors of Ruth Drake. You get it? I'll act as a go-between for you and the Drakes. What do you mean? You say that we're ready to deal with you for the release of the girl? Sure. Is that a deal? Hey, what makes you so sure I've got that dame? Oh, well, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I'll tell you the reason why. When I first told you I quit the racket, that was the truth. I did quit. I bootlegged for ten years. Then I quit and retired to the life of a gentleman. And I went down on the Wall Street, and what happened? They took me. They took me for every cent of the honest, hard-earned money I had, the dirty crooks. So I tried to come back in the only way I know. I bought $100,000 worth of stuff, and I was all set to run it in. I was on my way in with it, in a fast boat. When a government revenue cutter got on my tail, 
and I had to dump $100,000 worth of uncut stuff into the ocean. Only. That was no government boat. That was this silly Drake thing, playing around with an express cruiser, chasing rum runners for excitement. So I grabbed her, because I figured the Drake outfit owes me 100,000 coal. And I'm gonna hang on to her until her old man pays me back every cent I lost. Well, have you talked to him yet about the money? No. You never had a better chance. Well, we couldn't get a better man, boys. Listen, if old man Drake gives you $100,000 for us and promises not to prosecute, we turn back the girl. And if they don't, well... Okay, it's a deal. Give me one of those cards. We want this dough in small bills. And where we're gonna dump it, the serial numbers won't do them any good. Now, here. To whoever gives you this half, you turn over the dough. And you'll get full instructions where to find that dame. And so that Drake will know you're dealing with the proper people, we'll send you some of her clothes tonight. And to Larry, we might even slip you a couple of grand for your trouble. No, thanks, my Louie. I want no part of you. And uh, didn't I tell you he was the right guy? Of course, I don't have to tell you what'll happen if you try to cross us. You gave me a rough idea tonight. Oh, that's all right, kid. Now run along and write your story. Uh, you going to Kelly's with us, Chief? No, I'm steering straight home. Look, without one little slug? Without even thinking of one. It's awful good for those jitters, Chief. No, I'm all shot. To make matters worse, here comes Larry Wayne. Hey, hold on again, Lucille. You're going back to work. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Brisbane, the final edition has just gone to press. Well, you'll shoot an extra edition on this yarn. Say, you go. Would it be all right with you if we printed your column on the front page of the regular edition? It'd be great for your readers. Save them the trouble of turning over all those pages to get to my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't try to kid with me, Lucille. I'm too smart for you. Oh, good night. Now, don't run out on me or I'll have to phone Jones. This paper's getting out an extra whether you believe it or not. Are you on the level? You can bet Gandy safety pin against your old red suspenders, I am. I found the Drake girl. You what? I found the mugs that topped the offspring of John Drake. Who are they? That I can't tell. Where is she? That I don't know. Oh! <laughs> and you want us to get out an extra? Well, now, boys, isn't that great? Isn't that marvelous? Well, if you don't mind, Ego, I'm going home. Now, wait a minute. I'm not clowning. I really found the outfit that's holding that girl. Take a look at what I got for my trouble. They want 100 grand for a release. They've authorized me to print their demand and accept the dough. Now, is that a story or isn't it? It's a pip. Uh -huh. I got a hand it to you. Well, I don't believe it. You what? Well, I mean, I, I don't believe them. Now, listen, why should they let you in? I got it. They took a smart way out. They know I can't cross them. Well, why don't you tell the police? And have the girl disappear forever? Don't be a mug. John Drake will pay a million dollars for her release, and you know it. Let the police get him after she's saved. Let's get her first. Larry's right, Chief. Sure. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mind your own. Who's running this around here? I'm not going to make a chump out of this paper just because some guys are trying to make a sucker out of him. Well, I know they got it. And if you don't want to print the story, I'll find a paper that will. Well, you haven't got the slightest proof. You haven't even seen the girl, have you? Where do you think I did get this? Mr. Wayne! Mr. Wayne! Here's a package for you, Mr. Wayne. Oh, what is it? I don't know. I'm standing downstairs by the door. Up the the car, a man's voice yells out, Give this to Mr. Wayne! And that package is thrown at me. Oh, -ho. Looks like the lady forgot her underwear. There's proof for you, smart guy. Some of Ruth Drake's clothes. That's some evidence. And here's evidence enough to even convince you. R.D. Ruth Drake. Mr. and Mrs. Drake. All right, Wayne, shoot your story. Give me the press room. Hey, you guys, stick around here. I'm gonna need you. Hello, Pete. Keep all your boys together and clear the presses for a new edition. Larry Wayne just accidentally stumbled over a clue in the Drake case. Stumbled, huh? You could fall flat on your face and come up without a clue. Uh, hey, Pete, tell your boys to keep up in the toes. This is red hot. Caused an awful lot of excitement today. Yeah, but let's forget about that now, Barton. Get out of the column. Get me Commissioner Patrick on the phone. Commissioner Patrick. What poem did I pick for today? Annabelle Lee. Yeah. And the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of my beautiful Annabelle Lee. Larry Wayne calling Commissioner Patrick. 
Ruth Drake is beautiful, isn't she, Barton? Is that why you're so anxious to save us? Oh, of course not. But as long as you're going to save a girl's life, it might just as well be a beautiful girl's life, don't you think so? Just a moment, the commissioner. Commissioner, you may not believe it, but I'm sick to death of those dicks you got planted out in front of my doorstep. I can get along without them from here on in. Those men are going to stay there till you see it's your duty to tell us who you're dealing with. Oh, and I suppose you promise to protect the life of Ruth Drake if I do. Wayne, you seem to be unable to realize that it's my duty to apprehend criminals. I'm going about that job the only way I can. And since you won't help me, I'll continue to use my own methods. Ready for dictation, Barton? Okay, let's go. Where's the Park Avenue swank scene lately in hot spots with, uh... I like her eyes, Barton. Hello. The Commissioner. Whatever it is, no. I merely wish to tell you, Wayne, that if you persist... Commissioner, my first interest in the Drake case was a news story. That's my business, and I got it. My second and most important purpose became the saving of that girl's life. Now, I know it's rotten wrong for Drake to have to pay to get her back, but he wants her, and that's his business. Now, if my silence makes me a party to their crime, I'll take a rap for it. I'd rather do that than talk and be guilty of a murder. After the girl is recovered, there's nothing I'd rather see than the capture and conviction of these people. But that's your business. Now, where were we? Wayne. Hello. Why has the monogram on the new Femme Warbler's imported car been changed? Can it be that, uh... Mary Wayne's office. The commissioner. Ah, uh, tell him I've gone to Sitka, Alaska. To meet the abductors. Mr. Wayne is not in. Can it be that the WK donor is a Hiawatha giver? Or, uh... You know, I like her hair, Martin. Not too... You're going to have to chew it little gum, Fresh apple or chocolate today, Mr. Wayne? Oh, Sam, what do you know? Everything is fine. Buy your kind of a candy. Buy the mouth. The cigar, cigarette, the chocolate, everything is fresh. Sit down. You always light your cigarettes that way? Yeah, I got the idea from Rube Goldberg. Hmm. 
sure you're not trying to destroy evidence? Well, believe it or not, I am. <laughs> well, all right, Wayne. I just want to tell you I've been advised to play along with you. They're not only worried about the daughter, but if she isn't returned, they have grave fears for Mrs. Drake. So I'm going to leave you alone to put your deal through. Thanks. Have you contacted with them about delivering the money? I've already paid it. And since you're going to be regular with me, Commissioner, I'll do something for you. I'll deliver Ruth Drake to your office tonight at 12 o'clock. Tonight? Midnight. Can I make a statement to that effect? You can in our papers. Mr. Jones, I'm delivering Ruth Drake to the Commissioner's office tonight at 12 o'clock. Now, uh, do you want the story exclusive, or shall I slip it to the other papers? Of course it's exclusive. And if it's the truth, it calls for an extra edition, so get busy. All right, Wayne. May, may I go with you tonight? Oh, uh, did you memorize that paper? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Barton, come here a minute. I want you to do something for me. I'd do anything for you. Take this out and get a swell silver frame for it. Water down. This is the place, all right, number 13. Mm, that's terrible. Hey, look. Maybe you better go back and wait. Not a chance. Okay, come on. Kind of a place they think. That's the reason. 
me, Barton. Come on. It's 12 o'clock. In all my experience as district attorney of this county, I have never been party to such an irregular proceeding. Oh, don't be so exacting, Thomas. Things like this can't be run on the schedule. He'll be here. I never saw so many cameras or reporters at one time before in my life. 12 o'clock, where's Wayne? Oh, he met daylight saving time. I'm here to keep my appointment with you, Commissioner, and to report my failure to secure Ruth Drake. You mean to say they didn't keep their word with you? Yes, sir. No, perhaps you're willing to talk. If I do, it'll be through my column. And you gave them the $100,000? Yes, sir. Quite sure, Mr. Wayne? Positive, sir. I believe him. Well, I don't. It's either an attempt to get a lot of cheap personal publicity or the hallucination of a crazy mind. Tomorrow, every newspaper in this country will be poking fun at the blade. We'll be laughed and jeered at because of your false statements. Personally, I don't believe your story. I don't think you ever made a contact with the men. And I don't believe you ever passed the hundred thousand dollars. Yes, sir. I'm at your service any time you care to call me, Commissioner. Well, then I'll put you up on my paper. Okay, I just didn't. You to go home, Barton. I can't. I'm too excited. All right, you walk on up the office and wait for me. I'm going to walk up and dope out a story that'll burn your typewriter. I'm going to blast some, Barton. I'm going to expose the whole rotten mob. Hey, what do you say? Hey, what are you That policeman? We're not coppers, you sap. you fell under the table and crossed me. I suppose you brought me here to finish the job and put me away. Okay. But before you do, I want to tell you that you played a rotten game with me. I not only kept my word with you, but I delivered the dough you asked for. You didn't come through. Let me promise the recovery of Ruth Drake, only to make a chump out of me. Let me build up the hopes of her parents, only to have them crushed worse than ever. Well, you're rotten low, my way. And the lowest thing that crawls. Oh, I can take the truth, Larry, without losing my temper. I did. I put you behind the eight ball tonight, but I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Sorry? 
And why did you get me into this thing in the first place if you couldn't deliver it? I didn't get you into this. You butted in. You practically forced your way in. Being so smart, you told me I had that dame. Well, seeing as you know everything, and since you said I had her, I figured, uh, well, I must have her. So I told you I wanted a hundred grand for a... Larry always gets the lowdown, don't you, Larry? Well, if you haven't got her, where did you get her clothes and lock it? As if you don't know. You who gets around. Oh, you're not kidding me, fellas, so come clean. I've been on the level with you, why not shoot square with me? You still want to get the girl back? More than ever before. Well, you still got a chance. You mean more money? No, no, Larry. Money won't do it. That's why I couldn't turn her over to you even after you gave me the dough. I couldn't do it. I had orders not to. Orders? From whom? Who do you think I take orders from? Who does everybody in the racket take orders from? Oh, you mean the big guy? I don't mean anybody else. Hey, he wants to see you. Come on. You're a writer, aren't you, Wayne? After our fashion. You like Dickens? Very much. And so do I. I'm reading Oliver Twist. Did you like that? First of all, I think. I think so, too. But you know, there's one character I don't like. Fagin. <laughs> He's a heartless old rascal. Huh? I suppose in Dickens' day they had people like that. Do you know the President of the United States? Not personally. Do you know John Drake? Not really. But you do know that besides being a member of his cabinet, he's the President's best friend. I've heard so. Do you know that I've been indicted by the government? Yes. And that my trial comes up next month? Yep. And if convicted, they'll send me up for life? Yes. And you do know that they will convict me? Well, I've read they expect to get you. They haven't a chance to lose, unless I can make a deal. With the government? Aren't you being just a little optimistic? Perhaps. John Drake is loved by the president, the public, and his brother officials. And I don't think they want any harm to come to that girl. I begin to see why you couldn't deliver. Oh, he could deliver all right if you could get to the president. You mean you want the government to drop all its charges against you? Oh, no, no. Just some of the indictments. I don't want a clean bill. I'll go to jail for him. But I'll do two years, that's all. If they send me up for life, They'll put Ruth Drake away, too. Now, well, there's a chance to make your story good, Larry. Oh, they wouldn't believe me if I went to Washington with a yarn like that. After tonight's experience, they'd put me in an insane asylum. Not if you have a letter from the girl to her father asking him to save her. Well, how do I know you've even got the girl? I took your word for it before, and it cost John Drake $100,000. What's $100,000 to rich men like Drake or myself? That was only mile away's bit. Well, even if you have got the girl, how do I know she's still alive? And anyway, I'm washed up with the whole affair. It's put me in a mess as it is, and I'm through. Yeah, well, you're not through. You're going to Washington, you put my proposition before the president, and you bring his answer back here to me. If he agrees, you'll still have the glory of returning the girl. If he refuses, well, you'll at least feel that you did the best you possibly could to save her. Now, you get a letter from the girl, give it away, and then fly him to Washington. Uh, Wayne, I like this book very much. I want to finish it. Good night. Come on, kid. Ruth and Dirty. This is Mr. Drake speaking. Oh, yes, yes, that'll be fine, thank you. And, and will you tell the President that I appreciate this very much?
John, dear. My dear, my dear, I thought you promised to go to bed. Oh, I'm all right, dear. Are you and Mr. Wayne going to see the president? Yes, yes, we're on our way there now. And you'll ask him to save Ruth? Yes. Even if he must do everything that Mr. Wayne says they demand for her freedom? I can't ask him that. But you must, dear. It may mean Ruth's life. He'll do it for you. You're his friend. You've been his friend for years, his best friend. He can't refuse you. That's why I can't ask him. Then why go it all? Why not just leave oh, our doctor's please, mercy? Please, please, my dear. I want the president to hear the proposition Mr. Wayne brings with him and act according to his feeling in the matter. And you think he'll say yes? If I were the president, I should say no. Even if it meant Ruth's death? Even if it meant her death. I'd get on my knees to him if necessary. No, my dear, no. You wouldn't. I would. And if you won't take me, I'll go alone. I want Ruth back, dear. And even if you can't demand such a favor for the president, you have no right to keep me from asking. Well, I am here by appointment, sir. Yes, I know, Senator, but the President's in conference with Mr. Drake, and he asked me to explain to you that the matter involved is so urgent he must beg your indulgence for just a few moments. That's quite all right, sir. Being from a democratic state, I expected to have to wait. And that, Mr. President, is the situation as it was stated to me. As I understand it, Mr. Wayne, you are here representing this person, Morgan. Only in as much as I am conveying his demands to you. How does a man of this sort happen to entrust such a mission to you? Well, in the pursuit of my newspaper work, I discovered the facts of the case. And I couldn't have used them without endangering the life of Ruth Drake. And do you think her life now depends upon my decision? I'm positive of it, Mr. President. In spite of the fact that you can testify as to their guilt? Well, would my testimony uncorroborated prove their guilt? And if they fasten weights under the body of Ruth Drake and drop her into the sea, could you ever establish it? Then, unless the government agrees to drop most of the charges against Morgan, the life of the daughter of my dearest friend is forfeit. Is that it? That's exactly as he put it. Tolerating this man and his kind is one disgrace to which America must shamefully plead guilty. My duty is clear. But my friendship for John Drake threatens the performance of it. One word from him and my sense of righteousness may falter. One nod of poor Mrs. Drake's head might tempt me to forget the millions I represent in order to reclaim her daughter. But neither of these good citizens want their daughter back at such a cost to society. So, Mr. Wayne, you may tell him my answer is no. The government of the United States will not negotiate with criminals. You may tell him also that we will press the charges. And if he escapes our legal forces, there are other forces that I can send against him and his kind until I drive them out of America. I'll carry that message proudly, Mr. President. And if you go through with all you said, it'll be a great thing to do. And I know. I'm a snooper by profession. I get the lowdown on what's going on. And there's a lot of rotten things happening in this country that you ought to try to fix. And when you do, Mr. President, it'll be OK America. Here's Larry Wayne, boss. Come back in a half an hour. And bring some of that lavender toilet water with you. I like it on my feet. Not that I need it. It feels good. So you saw the president? Yes. First you went to the Drakes. And then with Drake and his wife, you went to the White House. You'd make a good newspaper man. I'm better than a newspaper man. They're looking all over for you. I know every move you made. You uh, were a long time with the president. Yes. And? He agrees. 
Oh, then he knows something of my power. Oh, yes, he said you were too powerful. The president said that? And meant it. <laughs> well, when do I hear definitely? You're hearing definitely right now. At first, the president was against making any sort of a promise. But Mrs. Drake's tears persuaded him. Of course, he can't publicly commit himself any more than you can make your transactions openly. But return Ruth Drake safely, and he gives you his word that the government will restrict their prosecution of you to a minimum degree. Do you trust Wayne? He never crossed anybody yet. Well, <laughs> if you can take his word, I guess I can take the president's. Has the girl been landed? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. I'll release her. Now? Right now. I'll show the president how I do business and without using any red tape. Where did you promise to deliver the girl before? The police commissioner's office. And that's where we'll deliver her right now. A mile away. Tell the boys to come over and we'll have a little party. Okay, Chief. <laughs> Being a newspaper man, you want a little story, eh? Well, go ahead, call up your office. Thanks. And then we'll open a bottle of wine and we'll celebrate. By that time, we'll call the police commissioner's office and the girl will be there. And then we'll tell the president. Is that all right? Okay. You know, Wayne, you're a nice fellow. I like you because you're smart. So the president thinks I'm too powerful, eh? Well, the president is no fool either. Go ahead, call up. Give me the blade. Come on, Al, come on, don't stall. Now, where is he? I tell you, I don't know. You've got to tell us. The police are looking for him. I don't know. I... Hello. Hello. Where have you been? I thought something terrible... Oh, never mind about that, Barton. Get this. Ruth Drake will be in the commissioner's office within the hour and tell that stupid Mug Jones if he wants a real scoop to shoot the story. Ruth Drake will be in the commissioner's office within an hour? He's crazy. Oh. Sure, sure, but maybe that yarn's on the level. Oh. Hello. Hello, Eagle. This is Lucille. No, the, this is your city editor. Is that on a level? You can bet Garbo's sex appeal against Al Smith's Brown Derby on it this time. Put Barton back on the wire. All right, all right. Here, take it. Hello. Did you want to speak to me again? No, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to tell you to wait for me. Okay. We've got work to do. You old newspaper fellows have an exciting racket, you know that? Well, your racket isn't exactly a rest cure. Uh, you'd enjoy working for me. Afraid not. Waiting to get bumped off wouldn't appeal to me. Well, after all, isn't that what everybody living waits for? I don't do it all, you know, even though your newspapers say I do. A lot of the killings come from up there, too. Hmm. Did you ever think of quitting? I never quit. So your president thinks I'm too powerful now, does he? Well, let me tell you something. Ten years from now, I won't have to ask any favors of them. I'll tell them what to do. <laughs> I was told to ask for the commissioner of police. Is he in? Who wants to know? Uh, Ruth Drake. Ruth Drake. So you're in. Yeah, yeah. The Drake girl's been found. Cover the Drake case. All right, Bosch. Drake girl found. District attorney's office right away. Yeah. Special X three. Drake girl. X three. X three. All about the Drake case. Special X three. You've got no excuse now, Wayne. I want you to open up in this case. Your paper was on the street with the whole story before she even got here. So I know you know. I'm at your service any time, Commissioner. I appreciate your confidence in me, Morgan. You kept your word with the President. And now we'll call him. No. But now that the girl is safe, I'll tell you what he really said. He said that the government doesn't make deals with criminals. And that as much as he wanted to save the daughter of his friend, he preferred her death to your existence. He called you the one disgrace that America was ashamed of. And told me to tell you that if they couldn't convict you in court, he'd find other ways of doing it. But he doesn't have to bother. Because I'm going to put you away for him. <laughs> You're drunk, Wayne. That wine has gone to your head. I'll put the gun down, and I'll forgive you. I'm going to kill you, Morgan. 
See if you can think up any reason to ask for mercy for yourself on the other side. Dope it out quick. Don't be a fool. Don't you realize if you kill me, there'll be 20,000 men waiting to get you? Okay. And there's 120 million people waiting for me to get you. No, don't shoot. I kept my word with you, didn't I? I gave the girl back to you. I'll do anything you ask, anything at all. Let's get to work. Without telling me how you did it, where was she? Let's get out the column. You'll have it all. What phone did I tell you to top it off with today? I have a rendezvous with death. Beautiful. Yeah. Have a rendezvous with death. Maybe you shall take my hand, lead me into his dark land, close my eyes and quench my breath. Maybe I shall pass him still and have a rendezvous with death on some scarred slope of battered hill. Let's get to work. During the last few days, Mrs. Wayne's little boy, Larry, has been going new places and doing new things. Larry Wayne. Why don't you go home, Barton? You don't have to pack that stuff until morning. Podcast tonight, huh? Yes, at eight. Well, I'm sorry I can't drop you off tonight, Barton. I'm going to walk in. Oh, do you have to print all those names? Don't you realize they're going to get you for it? Say, those names are nothing compared to the one I'll slip them over the radio. Listen in, kid. Oh, Barton. Come here. Hey, you're a great gal, Barton. But don't keep that guy waiting forever. Ladies and gentlemen, again we hear from your favorite columnist, Larry Wayne. All right, Larry. Okay, America. This is Larry Wayne. I got a lot of hot news for you tonight, folks, but before I spill it, I want to tell you something. Tomorrow in my column, you'll read the name of every member of the gang guilty of the Ruth Brick abduction. And I'll slip you the inside on a few other crimes as well. But right now, I got a story for you that's a honey. And I didn't have to dig to get it because it's about your own little boy. Tonight, between 6.30 and 7, I killed the big guy, Duke Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, a horrible and unbelievable tragedy has just occurred right here in our midst. I'm doing this podcast, kid. Friends, this is Larry Wayne. Silent. Oh. Okay. 